In western Minnesota, as across much of central and southern Minnesota, the landscape gradually goes from black to green to brown, and then the primary tillage turns those fields uh, back to black soil. We grow crops very intensively for about four months of the year, and those are the warm summer months. And then after that, we harvest them, and for the most part, we have nothing on the soil. Soil that does not have living plant roots in it cannot be fully healthy soil. The challenge farmers faced in the Midwest is that we've become very good at producing corn and soybeans. After a few profitable years, we find that the price of those commodities has dropped and some farmers are losing money on every acre they plant. Now we're actually starting to see people losing their farms and there's a palpable sense of despair among many farmers. So what we need to do is to find a way for farmers to grow things during the other eight months of the year. And this is the whole project that we have going on in the Forever Green Initiative. The Forever Green Initiative is a program that has been in place for about 25 years and is designed to develop the next generation of agronomic crops. We're now standing in the research fields at the University of Minnesota, where most of the uh, crops that are currently grown in the state of Minnesota have been produced. We have a series of perennial crops that are under uh, development. For instance, hazelnut, sillflower, perennial flax, elderberry. We are trying to change agriculture in a fundamental way to make sure that we have living roots and living crops present on the land all year round. This is the world's first perennial grain crop for the temperate zone. This is called Kernza, also known as intermediate wheatgrass, and it produces a grain that's very similar to wheat, and it can be used for uh, many of the same purposes as wheat. It's a small plant above ground. Below ground, its roots extend as far as 15 and 20 feet down into the soil. So it produces a remarkable structure that's able to hold on to very large amounts of rainfall, it's a remarkable plant. And we are working actively with a number of commercial partners to develop a whole line of new food products that are made from Kernza. I'm Gabe Guzmini, I'm the director of crop improvement at PepsiCo, and I'm located on the campus of the University of Minnesota. PepsiCo is interested in the Forever Green program and the crops that's studying because they both help lowering the environmental footprint of agricultural supply chains uh, and they could enable new and interesting products for our consumers in the future. We own Quaker as a cereal brand and we're always looking for new grains. PepsiCo is committed to sustainable agriculture and a big focus around soil health and soil preservation. I think perennials will be a strong contributor to new ways of producing food alongside winter annuals. My name is Carmen Fernholz, and my wife Sally and I operate about 350 acres of organic diversified crops here near Madison, Minnesota. Like much of the Midwest, the main income revenue for these farmers is corn and soybeans. That's my nephew. This is his soybean field. 90 to 95 percent of the ground has nothing really growing in it for at least six months out of the 12-month year. We are looking at the currents of field that I planted, and the nice thing about this crop is it's a perennial. It grows back each year. So I, as a farmer, don't have to come back each spring and work the ground and reseed the crop. If we get down close here, this is what the new Kernza looks like. This is baby, baby Kernza, a little over a month old. And you can see how it's already branched out. I'm going to guess that root system is down at least six inches or better. The nice thing about this field now is that It'll actually stay green now over the winter. In fact, if there were a foot of snow on this in the winter and you come out here and dig, it would probably still be a little bit green. In fact, the snow protects it so it can keep growing over the winter. And if we really want to get scientific, if something is growing, we've got microbial activity in that soil building fertility even during the winter months. Check out the Kernza crop 
that we harvested this year. This is the raw seed as it has come from the combine. The really dark brown is the actual Kernza seed. Kernza has several uses already being developed, and one of the first ones is the cereal. Research is showing how it can be used in baking and cooking, things of that nature. Kernza flour. When I first learned about Kernza and the whole idea behind it, this whole new paradigm of how we could do agriculture in our country, I got really excited. My name is Tracy Singleton, and I am the owner of the Birchwood Cafe in Minneapolis. Our mission here is really to connect people to where their food comes from. Sourcing as much of our ingredients as possible from local farmers using organic and sustainable and regenerative practices. It fits in with everything that we do here at the Birchwood. We've made waffles with it, we've made pancakes with it, we make the crackers with it, and we have it in a focaccia bread. All right, ready? Yep, here we go. We started with Kernza when Marshall from Birchwood Cafe asked us if we wanted to brew with it. And how many times do brewers get to brew with a new grain? We said absolutely yes we would. We are Sandy and Jay Boss Febo, owner brewers of Bang Brewing. In St. Paul, Minnesota. We have a one room brewery that does everything. It's a 30,000 bushel rock <laughs> grain bin. So it's a visual tie to the farms that make possible what we do. Yes. Man, I do what I can. <laughs> we have people showing up that know that we brew with Kernza, and they look specifically at the menu and ask which beer features the grain. We even have a banner in our brewery that depicts the root structure of Kernza compared to annual wheat to scale, and the visual of that root mass is just incredible. Working with Kernza has been an honor. The principles that drive us, smallest footprint, biggest impact. We're focused on working with sustainably farmed and organic ingredients. Perennial grain is such a novelty in the world of beer that it's been awesome. When it comes to perennial crops in general, we're looking for a win-win all the way through the system protecting the natural resources for the public and providing new economic opportunities for that supply chain, including rural communities and marketers. When I look ahead to the next 20, 25 years, I'm hoping that my grandchildren look across this landscape and see all of these green fields in the middle of November. And then in the springtime, as the snow is melting away, see these same green fields out there.